Hi there. Let me take you through the solution to the investigative task question number six from the 2014 AP statistics exam. So the first thing you should do, as with any investigative task, is take the time to read the scenario. So you should read the context of the question. You should consider what you see here in this scatter plot. You should think about what the explanatory and response variables are. You should notice you have a linear model here that's been estimated for you. So it should take you a few minutes before you get to the first question. The point on the graph labeled A represents one car of length 175. That's the explanatory variable. The response variable is an FCR of 5.8A. That is the actual value. Calculate and interpret the residual. So first of all, you have to calculate the residual, but then you have to go back and interpret what it means for the car relative to the least squares regression line. So that means you have to know how to calculate a residual. A residual is an actual value minus a predicted value, y minus y hat. So the value of y was given to you in the question 5.88 and then you should subtract your prediction. So this is the intercept, and this is the slope from the regression line, and we're putting in the length of 175. Show your work. This simplifies to 4.93, and subtracting those, we get a residual of 0.95. Now don't forget, we calculated the residual. Now we have to interpret the residual. So you should write in context, just like almost anything else on the statistics exam. This residual indicates that for car A, car A has a length of 175, 175 inches, that's what we put into the regression model. The regression model has underpredicted its FCR by 0.95 gallons of gasoline per 100 miles traveled. So that 0.95 FCR is fuel consumption rate. We have underpredicted then. Notice that positive residual means the actual value is larger than the predicted value, so that when you subtract them, your leftover, if you will, is positive. That indicates an underprediction. The prediction was too small. So, underprediction by how much? 0.95 gallons of gasoline per 100 miles. That's part A. Calculate and interpret that residual. So, for part B, turn the page. Again, it should take you a moment. It should take you a minute or so, at least, to read the scenario that's being set up for you here. Now we have two different scatter plots based on different explanatory variables. Graph 2 uses engine size in liters as the explanatory variable, and the response variable is the residuals from the regression from the first page, the regression of FCR on length. Graph three, wheelbase in inches. That's the explanatory variable, and the response is the same as graph two, residuals from, again, the regression of FCR on length. So you are given information about point A. I have its actual FCR, its actual length, like we saw in the previous question, then engine size in liters and wheelbase in inches. So your job is just to go to graph three and circle the point that corresponds to the car represented by point A on graphs one and two. So here is point A on graph two. So notice its engine size, 3.6, that matches up. Notice we had a residual of 1.95, so that matches what we see in the response variable here, which is that residual like we calculated on the front side. So what we need to do is go over to graph three then, but graph three uses the wheelbase. So this car's wheelbase is 93 inches. So the point that we should be circling should be in between 90 and 95 inches for a wheelbase, approximately here, and it should have the same residual. So essentially all I need to do is go horizontally from graph two to graph three. I need a residual pretty close to one and I need to be between 90 and 95 inches on the wheelbase. There's the point we're looking for. So literally all you had to do was circle it. So it just takes a second to use the information that's given to you in order to identify that point. So part two then. 
there is a point on graph 3 that's labeled B. It's very close to the horizontal line at 0. What does that indicate about the FCR of the car represented by point B? This is really important. You have to actually answer this question using the fuel consumption rate. You have to talk about the fuel consumption rate. So the most obvious thing you might notice is that point B, it has a residual of essentially zero. But just noting that the residual is zero hasn't answered the question in the context because the context is asking you to describe what you see based on FCR. So take a look. I also, when I wrote my answer, I said also that the residual is approximately zero. That's great. But now you have to talk about it in terms of what we mean by FCR. This means that the FCR predicted for the car represented by point B, so predicted by the linear regression model that's based on length, that prediction is almost exactly the same as the actual FCR. So saying that the residual is approximately zero, although correct, that's not enough to answer this question. You have to explain why is it zero in terms of fuel consumption rate. Not that the fuel consumption rate is zero. That's not what this is saying. The residual is zero. That means that in terms of the fuel consumption rate, what's predicted by the model and the actual FCR, the actual fuel consumption rates, are nearly the same. So, turning the page, we're ready to go part C. Two more parts. So, part C. Write a few sentences to compare. That's a very important word. So, we should be using comparison terms. We're going to pair, compare the association between the variables in graph 2 with the association between the variables in graph 3. Now, what's interesting about this question is um, we are used to comparing distributions of data, comparing the shapes and the centers and the spreads when we are looking at the distributions of two sets of data. We have not done a lot of comparison of multiple scatter plots. So, in this question, we have two scatter plots. This is not about comparing now the shape, the center, and the spread. That's not what's important about scatter plots. When it comes to scatter plots, we want to compare the direction, the form, and the strength, and we should be comparing using comparison terms. Simply listing the direction and the form and the strength will not be enough to get you full credit on this question. So, graph two, engine size, compared to the residuals. From now on, I'm just going to say residuals, but they're the residuals from the initial regression where the explanatory variable was length on FCR. Graph 3, wheelbase compared to residuals. So in terms of the direction, so graph 2 is, has more clearly a positive direction compared to graph 3. Graph 2 has a more linear form than graph 3 has. Direction form, and then in terms of strength, the relationship in graph two, the pattern that we see, the trend is more strongly defined than what we see in graph three. And that, in fact, is the most important observation. But you need to make all of those observations. You need to describe direction, form, and strength. So here's the way I wrote my answer. So the association, and I wrote it in context, between engine size and residuals and those are residuals from the regression of FCR in length. So I'm just describing in context what does graph 2 mean. So that association in graph 2 follows a more obviously positive direction, a more clearly positive direction than the association in graph 3. In terms of form, the association, well, I'm still describing the direction here, the association between wheelbase and residuals in graph 3 really doesn't indicate a clear direction. So up to this point in my answer, all I have done is describe the direction, but I use this first part of my answer to communicate that I understand what graph 2 and graph 3 represent. Graph 2 is the association between engine size and residuals. Graph 3, then, is the association between wheelbase and residuals. Once I've stated that, I can continue writing my answer just talking about graph 2 and graph 3, but I wanted to get the context in there first. So, more clearly, graph 2's direction is positive versus graph 3. In terms of form, graph 2's form is more linear than that of graph 3. 
And then in terms of strength, graph two is stronger. The relationship we see is stronger than that observed in graph three. So I did make one final statement here because if you look at the scatter plots, the, the truth of the matter is in graph three, there really isn't much of an association in that scatter plot. There is not a clear direction. There is not a clear form. That is a scatter plot that's really quite scattered. I don't see a strong relationship between wheelbase and residual in that case. So I did also make that statement. In general then, graph three indicates there is little association between wheelbase and these residuals. So comparison terms though, that's very important. To answer part D then, Jamal wants to predict FCR using length, that's from the original model in part A, the original linear regression, and one of the other variables, either engine size or wheelbase, those are the variables where we were looking at the association between those variables and the residuals in part C. So now based on the response to part C, which variable, engine size or wheelbase, should Jamal choose? to use in addition to length in order to improve the prediction. So you need to choose engine size or wheelbase in the context of improving the prediction and you need to explain why you have made that choice. So first of all, make your choice, engine size or wheelbase. Engine size is the correct choice and you need to explain why this is going to improve the prediction. So to improve the prediction, this additional variable, Jamal's going to continue to use the length variable from the original model, but now we're going to use an additional variable to improve the prediction. So that variable needs to be associated to the residuals. Since the residuals represent the error in the FCR predictions, that length doesn't explain. That's really important. Length does not explain all of the variability that we see in fuel consumption rate. So between these two scatter plots, engine size is more strongly associated to the residuals or to the errors in the original model that uses length. Wheelbase doesn't have a strong association to those errors. If I want to do a better job of predicting, then I need to find a variable that's actually associated to the errors in the original prediction. Something is not being explained by length because of the direction and the form and the strength of this scatter plot compared to scatter plot three, it looks like engine size may help explain some of those errors. So to finish my answer, I stated since engine size is associated to these errors, engine size can help explain the errors and thus reduce the overall variability in predicting FCR. Length couldn't explain all of the variability. Some of that variability remained in the residuals. Well, it looks like engine size might be able to explain some of those errors because engine size is associated to those errors in a positive linear way. So we can use engine size then in explaining those errors to help reduce the overall variability in predicting FCR by combining and using both length and engine size to make a better FCR prediction. So bottom line, like in any number six question, it is so important to read the question and take your time. So from the very beginning of the question, you need to take a couple of minutes just to read the setup to the question. Look at the graph, look at the labels on the explanatory and response variables, look at the data that's presented to you before you try to answer any of the questions, because the questions must always be answered in context. For instance, in part A, it's not just calculating a residual, but interpreting it, so you have to understand the context. That's a very important part of doing any number six question. So this is a question that should take you at least 25 minutes 20 to 25 minutes on the actual AP exam. And because of how much it is worth, it is worth 12.5% of your overall grade on the AP statistics exam. This question, the number six question, is worth your time.